Tom. Mm. Hi, Angela. Um, risk of irking you to, to uh, oh, come back so, to... Uh, <laughs> was I irked? Was I really... Irked? I'm just trying to ex I understand. I'm not, well, I don't well, think I'm irked. I think Can it's you? the way you said it was so definitive and, and sort of like, like you were making a statement. <laughs> So, it wasn't, let me just yeah, go on, no, yeah, go on. So, um, <laughs> it felt, some people have suggested yeah. that it's sort of heaped unnecessary pressure on you to deliver. By stating a fact. In the way that you did. In, by stating a fact. Like, I'm not sure what did I do. Did I unfurl banners and get a band out? Like, if somebody... Like, am I supposed to say, well, that's not really relevant or that doesn't really count or that, you know, that's not really important? Because it is to me, because that's what I've got to rely on is that in my 26 years of managing, I've had success and a lot of that, most of that's come in the second year, not all of it. Sometimes happened in the first year, sometimes it's happened um, in the third year. Um, that I rely on that. That's something I've achieved. And so, you know, if you want to, at the end of your career, a couple of Pulitzers, mate, and somebody asks you, well, you know, when you've written for that thing, you've always won a Pulitzer, what would you say? Well, you know what, that's not really that important. I, I, I don't see why that puts extra, it doesn't put extra pressure on me because I love the fact that I've done that and that's what I, I want to do here. So, but, you know, I, I guess people... I don't know, like I said, I, I, I'd like to think that s just saying the truth is the way to go forward, but, you know, I, I think sometimes that's too confronting for people. I'd, they'd much rather I didn't or somebody didn't, I don't know. And when, when you say, is it relevant or what's relevant, mm -hmm. is, that, is the fact that you've always won in your second season relevant to how you will judge yourself on the second season? Do you judge yourself against yeah. that? Because that's a hell of a standard to judge yourself. Yeah, it is. But that's what that's all I've got. I, I don't understand, like, why... But therefore, in your head, have you somehow failed if you don't win a trophy this season? Yes. I failed last year in my head because that's how I'm geared. Okay, I think I've made it pretty clear what my expectations are. Now, but that doesn't mean that I stop. You know, that just fuels a fire of... Why didn't I do it? You know, why, why didn't we achieve last year? Why didn't we win something last year? That gets me going for this year, and this year it's about, you know, progress. So I, I don't, you know, that's, that's been my whole career. So I have that, I, like, that's my foundation. That's what I keep saying to people. That's why I'm sitting here. Like, there's no other way I could have got here. No chance in any universe I could have got here from Australia to be sitting at here answering questions from you, one of the you know, biggest clubs in the world in the best competition in the world, if I didn't have some sort of self-belief based on something of substance. I wasn't going to get here with my charm and good looks, mate. But um, if you're judging yourself against that, hmm. is it fair for other people to judge you on that bad floor? Yeah, I, I, I've never that sort of... I've never sort of trying to steer it. I mean, okay, you guys have had 13, 14 months for me. Have, have I ever downplayed anything? No. Uh, so I'm willing to be measured against that. That means that I'm fair game. And again, I, I've never said not to, you know. Now, how you, you know, come to your summary at the end, that's that's as much on you as it is on me. You, you can make your assessment on just one thing or many things or, you know. But I'm, I'm happy to be sort of, um, judge against that standard because that's my standard that's what I've done in the past and I don't want to dilute that because then I miss the opportunity of continuing the road that I've been on so I, I, I have no problems with people sort of using that as a yardstick um, I will say with four games into a season you know it's, it's pretty early so I remember I was up in Scotland with they ruled me out after two games I was gone you know it was, it was all over in a year we won a double so um, but I, but I get it. Like I said, I I, I just find that you know. I, oh look, it's just me. Oh, I'm going to be me. I'm going to say things the way I've always said them, and I'm not going to change. Yeah. Is it also just look, finally for me? Is it also you jumped in on Tom side? <laughs> <laughs> sure. um, is it also part of the unique challenge of 
shift in the culture here slightly, because I've covered this club for a long time and I've always felt the T word can be a dirty word around this place. <laughs> which which T? Yeah, okay, right. good, I'm glad you clarified. And, and yeah. then worry where you're going with the yeah. T word here yeah. sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I wonder whether that's part yeah. of you changing mindsets too. Well, <laughs> maybe yeah, but it's still me. Like I'm not, I'm not putting it on. That, that's that's the thing. I've never tried to sort of just do it as a tactic. It's it's still it's why I keep saying it's it's why I came here. I came here to to try and win things for the club. Um, I think that should be our measure. And if we fall short of that, then we've fallen short and we need to be better and improve. And that's up to me under my tenure to try and achieve that. Um, and I don't think there's anything wrong with embracing that. I mean, I, you know, again, I, I, I'd be, you know, I'd be surprised if anyone can dig up anything I've said in the last sort of 13, 14 months where I've tried to downplay anything. You know, even when we started well last year, I was saying, well, mate, if we, if people want to dream about us winning things, let's let them go for it. You know, I it's just the way I'm wired. I think it's it's the way forward, and I think you need to embrace that if you want to become a, a successful club and not not shy away from it. It's easy to look. I, not it's easy. I shouldn't say that, but you know, if I came out here and said, "Look, this is going to take three or four years," yeah, it would relieve pressure. But well, I don't. I don't want to wait three or four years. You know, this year's an opportunity, and then. If we do well this year, next year is an opportunity. So that's the way I think about it. Last um, 15 years or so of this competition, it's been won pretty much by United, City, Liverpool, Chelsea. So the richest clubs, and people might look at that and say, well, it's maybe it's too much for a club with Tottenham's financial resources to do it. Hmm. It seems too daunting. Do you just stray away from that? Is, it, is that kind of thing? Uh, well, I just think there are plenty of reasons why we can't be successful so there's no point focusing on those like you can you know there's countless reasons why you could say you know um this club won't win something i think i've always tried to focus on well the way i see it there is no impediments for us winning anything we want to if we're prepared to to plan for it and um you know be really bold in our approach in, in trying to achieve that you know, you know um I don't think I don't think there's anything limiting this club having success. I, I don't. I really don't believe that. That's why I'm here. Um, but that doesn't mean we're 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 ready for it now. Um, just means that that's what we should be striving for. Just just on being ready for it now, because you've said you don't want to wait. Um, you said after the game the other day, the team that conviction, conviction, which is a theme at times. Um, it's only done squad. That's you know, it yeah. consistent often happens, but. Do you feel from what you've seen so far that particularly attacking players have what it takes this year to achieve what you want? Yeah, look, I don't think we're, yeah, I mean, when I look at it, like, I think there, there is so much more upside. We're nowhere near capacity in terms of, you know, the players we have there at the moment. I mean, Dom Solanke is an obvious one. Richie hasn't even played yet. Um, you know, I think it's fair to say Sonny's had a sort of stop-start start to the season, I think, you know, he hasn't hit the consistent level. So I think, you know, the other guys like Brennan and, and Wilson, and I think there's a lot of growth in them. And, and Timo hasn't had much of an opportunity. I look at our attacking sort of midfield players again, I think there's massive upside in, in Kulisevsky. I'm just seeing more and more growth in him in, in that sort of attacking midfield role. So I think, you know, I definitely think there's, there's, this capacity there for us to improve in that area for sure, 100%. Um, and I think, you know, Dom and, and even Richie, just having a focal point up there, that's the reason we signed him, is going to make a, a big difference to us um, in that area. So um, so I think I think there is there, we have at present enough there for us to, to kind of, um, you know, overcome the, 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 the deficiencies we have at the moment through, like I said, more of a lack of sort of fluency and cohesion in, in that front third. It's a, we just haven't been able to sort of nail on a, a, a sort of a formation there that will give us some consistency. Just finally, um, specific question about Brennan. Yeah. Um, you as a manager will know we're slides to get fucked from, from fans when it's not going well yeah. or whatever, but um, it looks like he's turned off his Instagram account because of um, fan abuse. Not quite clear if that's the case, but it probably is the case. I mean, does that just go with the territory of being a high-level player? Yeah. 
I hope not. I, I hate how we've just normalised all that stuff. I mean, look, like you said, I'm, I've been around long enough, I, you know, and even when I was playing, I, I caught my fair bit, but it was usually over, you know, in the terraces and then the game was over and you'd go home and, you know, you, you, you know, after a while, because, you know, when, when people at the game, obviously they get a bit frustrated if you're not playing well and, you know, they, they give you some fairly direct feedback. I've had all that, but I hate how now, you know, young people, now you're talking about a young guy who, yeah, yeah, probably lacking a bit of confidence at the moment. Uh, things haven't gone his way, but he comes here every day. He's working his backside off. He's asking for feedback. He's doing everything right. You know, he's trying so hard to, to, to become the player he wants to be. It's hurting him a lot. It's not like he's out on the town and he doesn't care and he rolls up late. So what's his crime? His crime is that he hasn't isn't performing at the level that, you know, people expect of him and, you know, I think as a professional footballer, you've got to expect that, you know, you're going to get criticism about that. Um, and that's part of your growth. And, you know, still a young player. And I think there is so much more in Brennan that we're, we're, we're going to, we're going to bring out in him. But it's sad for me that we've kind of normalized that stuff that, you know, um, they're getting abuse and it is abuse. And a lot of it personally is, you know, well, that's just part of the territory. I, I, I don't see that. I mean, I don't cop it anymore. Like if somebody's abusive to me, they're going to hear it back because I, I just don't believe that that's right. I'll take criticism because of, that's my role and you then scrutiny, you have to. I think that's your role, but I've got no time for abuse. And, and you know, fortunately, with the, the young people today, they are, they are on these social platforms. It's easy for me. I can switch off and my one follower doesn't get upset by it. But, um, you know... For young guys today, um, you know, it's part of their world. You know, they, they seem to get some sort of enjoyment from it. I, I don't understand it, but they do. And, again, the fact that they've got to sort of limit their world, close their world a little bit because of, yeah. You know, I mean, what kind of person just writes abusive things to, to an individual? Like I said, criticism is one thing. Exasperation at a game is you've got to almost accept that, but. To sit down and write something abusive anonymously, where you know, say it in front of me, you'll get a punch on the nose. You won't do it again, mate. You know, but they won't do that. You know, they'll hide behind this. So I, I hate that it's normalised, but unfortunately, that's the world we live in. And like I said, for me, when I look at Brennan, I, I see a young man who's he's trying his hardest to to be the best he can be. Um, doesn't always guarantee success, and it's a part of his journey is how he deals with all this. Um, but mate, he's 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 a great kid. He's he's a great footballer, and uh, I, I I got a lot of. I'm very optimistic about what he's going to do for us. Mike, and um, just to revisit the T word, if I may, you're not the only big club that has got a few years without winning a major trophy. Everton have got 29 years. Newcastle is up to 55, I think, so far. 16 years since Tottenham won a trophy. And obviously, you're not responsible for that. You've only been there 18 months or less. Um, is it time that Tottenham Hotspur won another trophy? Is 16 years too long for a club of this size not to exercise the silver polish, as I say? Um, in, in isolation, yes, uh, because I think, you know, with the fan base it has, there's and they've seen other clubs, you know, in a similar stature win trophies in that time, I say yes. I think you've always got to put into context the fact that, you know, there's a period in there where they got very close. And we know in football it's fine margins sometimes between success and failure. It's not like it hasn't been, you know, the doorstep of success during that time. So you've got to say, okay, well, it hasn't been a total waste of 16 years. They built a stadium within that time, which which well, it's not just costs money, it is it's it is disruptive. And other clubs that have gone through a similar process and other clubs who will go through a similar process will see that, you know, that doesn't really gear you up for for success necessarily, makes it a little bit harder. So there's, there's context to those 16 years, but if you're a supporter of this club and, you, and you've seen others do that in the last 16 years, then I think they would say, yeah, look, it is time. Um, and, you know, that's... You know, like I said, that's that's kind of my responsibility whilst I'm in, you know, in this chair to to try and change that. And uh, I think to change that, you know, you need to, you know, you, you need to 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 kind of change, you know, the way you you, you you approach things as well. Because ultimately, if you just keep doing the same thing, you're going to get the same outcome. One last one. Um, 
hindsight's a wonderful thing. Um, it's a beautiful thing. Um, yeah. If you could turn the clock back, would you have made nine changes at Fulham last season, gone out of the first hurdle? Because ultimately, Fulham went on to reach the semi-finals. Yeah. yeah, which means yeah, which means they're a pretty good side, and we were playing them at their place, and we lost on penalties. So. Um, again, hindsight's a beautiful thing and rewriting of history is a beautiful thing, but we had a really still a very, in fact, we had a very experienced lineup on the night. Um, it was kind of very early in the season where we needed to get some game time into some players. It wasn't like I put kids out there. I put out a very strong lineup and we lost on penalties, you know. So, um, I didn't dismiss that game. I didn't, you know, um, underestimate that game. I didn't go in that game thinking that we, it's okay if we lose, we would, we desperately wanted to win, but, you know, we were very early in a season where with a brand new squad, um, you know, some brand new players, you know, who just arrived. I mean, but, you know, we still we still put out a strong lineup, but we lost on penalties against the Premier League side away from home. I don't think that shows that we kind of underestimated the fixture, even in hindsight. And we'll finish with Dan for 12 o'clock tomorrow, please. Hi, yeah. um, there's a bit of a youth revolution going on at Spurs at the moment. You've got three teenagers in the summer, you've got two more coming next year. How do you marry those short term ambitions to win something with your job of developing these players? Um, uh, I think it has to happen in conjunction because, you know, what uh, what, what, we're try, what I'm trying to do is what, um, what I've done wherever I've been, irrespective of my tenure, is kind of build teams that will be. Um, kind of challenging over a course of time and, and all teams that do that seem to grow together. So you need that element of youth for it to, to come to fruition as, as you go along. Um, so it has to be a combination of both. Um, you, you, when do you hit the sweet spot where you've got enough experience in the building and also the young players have had enough experience? That's where hopefully well, it all comes together and then when the experienced come, players come to the end of the cycle, you've got the rest coming through. So, so I think I've, I've always done it, and I think it's it's a balancing act. Um, but I, I, you know, I'm really excited about the young players we've 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 brought in and the ones who are coming in. That, um, and you look, another manager might be the beneficiary of them. I don't know, but um, I think in the course of time they're going to prove to be really good footballers. You know, and really make an impact. Um, and you know, part of that is, like I said, developing. And they can only develop if they play. So we've got to give them the opportunity to play. Um, but, I, you know, just the three we've brought in, you know, sort of well, with Mikey as well, I mean, young Will Langshire, but, um, you know, Wilson, Archie, Lucas, I just really love watching them at training at the moment. They, you know, they, they want to play. They want to make an impact. They, they don't look like 18 year olds or 19. That they behave like, which is which is great for me because, you know, when they're 21, they're going to hopefully be flying. But that's kind of part of our responsibility to to develop them. But I, I think if you want to sort of have successful kind of period, I think you need you can't just bring in just experienced players and sort of go for one hit at, at having success. Because there's an old adage in English football, you don't win anything in kids. Until you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, th I think um, all those kind of things, uh, you know, it's always great to, to break uh, stereotypes along the way. So, um, yeah, no, I, I, I think, look, you definitely need the experience. I mean, it was mentioned before that having winners in the group helps that process because when a young guy comes in, if he's got somebody there who's already won things, he kind of learns the behaviours, learns. So you need, you do need both. Um, but um, I've always liked, you know, the the sort of fearlessness and sometimes naivety of the young players bring that that I haven't felt, you know, the real pain of, of losing, you know, something. So, um, you know, I, I like the fact that they, they're they a little bit fearless in that. Just on that, I mean, every fan knows about the 16 year trophy drought. Yeah. I'm sure it's not going to weigh on you, but how do you stop that weighing on your players, particularly your, your senior players you might have been through then? Yeah, well, I, I, again, you, um, you can try and sort of, you know, a bit like the, the T word, you can try and sort of ignore and push it aside, but it's a reality. It's That's what it is. Like it's like I said before, it's a fact. So, just face up to it, mate, and and 
I, the way I, I kind of flip it on to I think, oh, yes, I keep saying to the guys, what a great opportunity. Like, imagine you are the ones that do it. I mean, what else? I mean, I keep saying it was the biggest attraction for me coming here. Not, not, not because of the. It's you know, great. I, I get it. It's the Premier League, and everyone wants to be here. It's a big club. I get it. And you know, you do get well rewarded financially. You get to, you know, talk to fantastic people like yourself. So all these things are great attractions. But the one that ticked the biggest box for me was that. That imagine I did. Imagine it was in my second year. <laughs> like, imagine that happened, right? I reckon it's something I can reflect pretty fondly on. So that's the way I see it. I see it as a burden. I just see it as an opportunity, and that's what I keep saying to the players every day. Don't ignore it, but see it as as an opportunity to, to do something special. Now, it's not easy, though, you know. When you say these things and I'll put it out there, then, oh, my God, what if it doesn't happen? And, you know, we've lost on the weekend and, you know, people are – you know, going to be coming for you, that's okay, don't worry. Think about the flip side of that if it does happen. Yeah, you know, that's, what, that's what's got to motivate us. Great. Thanks very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. That was a very enlightening... <laughs> <laughs>